Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're going to be taking a look at another Superfish filter but this one isn't an internal. This one is actually an external canister filter and this is the Aqua Pro 600 from Superfish. I'll just spin it around so you can see the diagram because when I first looked at that I thought that looks very much like the 06 series from Fluval. There we are. I would have to ignore the fragile tape on here. This is how it actually arrived to me in the box. Now this was sent to me by a guy called Christian. Thank you very much Christian. Awesome that you sent me this because I didn't even realize Superfish did canister filters. I was reasonably impressed with their little internal filters. The construction quality was meh, but they held a lot of media. We've got that down the side of the filter. That is basically a foam cartridge that comes in and out. And then we've got trays as well. The water flows a little bit differently to what it does in the 06 series from Fluval, but that is clearly what they've based this filter on. So now, this has actually arrived to me empty, so there's no foams and no media in here. But, if I just drag that a little bit closer, you should be able to see that in here there should be coarse, medium and fine pads. So that is all our mechanical filtration. Water goes through there and then it goes through plastic balls, foam, ceramic rings, plastic balls, which is basically our biological media. So according to that, all these trays should be available for biological media and that's good. We've got the pump in the bottom of the canister instead of in the top where it normally is so that eats into a little bit of the space so when I get this out the box we'll see just how much space is available in here. Now these fittings are okay if they do happen to snap you can get replacements apparently but that is a reasonably thick piece of plastic here and the plastic quality is okay I do like the idea that you've got little teeth here that bite into these holes and that snaps down pretty well and then on the other sides you've got little grey clasps so you would lift that up then you would lift it up again so that it kind of breaks the seal and that allows you to get the top off. This top is very, very light. So the water goes in here, it goes into this hollow cavity, drops out these holes, drops down here, and then it goes through the foams, through these top trays, like through the sides and around these sides, and then down to our pump that sits in the bottom before being returned up here and back out to the tank. And having that pump in the bottom means that this should self prime because any air will just naturally come to the top and just bubble out you know you haven't got your pump in the top sitting in a little pocket of air okay as I said it came with nothing in it that would normally be a foam cartridge so in here you would have your fine medium and coarse pads water would go through from coarse to fine then it would go through here through the sides there of your top two trays which are also perforated on the bottom and then through another two trays now there's a little rubber seal that's fallen out of one of the trays I will show you where that's from and why having multiple little seals isn't a good idea so water's put, drawn through the trays, drops out the bottom of the bottom tray into here, pump sucks it in and blows it back out up here through this tube that's been created by all the various little tubes on the trays. And if I flip these trays over, you should be able to see that there is a little rubber seal here. Now that can fall out, so you've got to be careful not to lose them. Yeah, there you go. That's where that one's come from. So that would sit on there so that when that 
presses up against that, it does create a watertight seal. And actually these trays fit into each other very well. You've probably got about half an inch that slots inside. So they do really fit together very well to prevent any sort of um, bypass, you know. So two trays are perforated all the way around the sides. Two are not. And those two that aren't just have the perforations in the bottom. So those ones actually go in the bottom. And because they're not perforated around the outsides, the water is forced down through those ones. In these top ones, it's still forced down because obviously it's being drawn down by the pump, but water can flow around them and come in from all angles. So really, all four trays are available for media. So we'll just get that out of the way for the time being and we'll concentrate on the trays and also the foam insert. Uh, but before I do, I'll just say that this rubber seal around the outside here is really big and thick. And I was reading a few of the reviews online that were saying apparently the Eheim seal from some of their filters fits around here as well if you ever need a replacement. This one's actually a little bit dry. I might put a bit of grease on that before I send it back. Now because we've only got about maybe an inch and a half or four centimetres to play with here as far as the thickness goes, we don't have room for a coarse, medium and fine sort of setup. Look at that. There just isn't the space for that. So really, we're kind of limited to using either a coarse and a medium bear in mind the medium will catch most of the fine muck as well or maybe a coarse and a fine or a medium and a fine really you can set this up however you want I think the medium and fine might block a little bit too quickly so I'm actually going to go with coarse and medium both of them are just ordinary bumpy pond foams cut to size and they will just slot in like this. You can see we've got the bumps on there, on that side, it's going to be pressed against that. We've got the flat bit, so we're effectively creating cavities there for a lot more muck to be held. And by having the bumpy side on the outside that is facing our flow of dirty water, that gives us maximum contact surface area on the outside. You can use flat foams if you want, but you can see the difference in the contact area between the bumpy one and the flat one. That's why I always use the bumpy one, to extend the intervals between getting into this filter and cleaning it out as long as possible. Just using bumpy foam or flat foam could make a difference of two or three weeks or something on a normal setup, you know, and if you're extending your cleaning times like that, you're going to be happier, the filter's going to be happier, and ultimately the fish are going to be happier. So we'll stick that other one in as well. Like so. Then we've got our coarse and medium. I will put those fine ones in to send back, just in case he wants to use them, but really that's probably as much as you need a coarse and a medium pad. So we'll stick that in the filter. slots in pretty well and then we'll get on to the trays now I'm cheating because I've already filled these with various sorts of media so I know how much it takes each one of these trays will hold 750 grams of bio gravel so we've got four trays that gives us three kilos of bio gravel that's what I used in here just to maximize the space because they are small trays and for you guys in the US three kilos is 6.6 .6 pounds so because we've got that amount of media in here it puts it on par with the 406 obviously this thing's a hell of a lot cheaper it, to be honest it isn't as well made as the 406 but it will hold as much media and I do like that big pad with a big contact surface area anyway I'll fill this with media bring it back and then I'll show you. There's another one of those little washers falling out. Little rubber washers. You've got to be careful not to lose them. Let's see which one that one's from. Bottom one. Right. 
I think the fact that the filter arrived here dry means that these have contracted a little bit. So they will fall out if this is bumped like that. I would have liked to have seen them fit a little bit better to be brutally honest with you, but even without them, the majority of the water, in fact I think all of the water is going to go up there. Yeah, I mean this slot inside of there, about a quarter of an inch or about five to six mil, so I don't think you're going to get any bypass anyway, but the washers ensure that you don't. Oh, I forgot to mention, all these trays actually have a little handle as well. It's actually pretty well made on the whole, you know, for a very cheap filter, it is well made. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the big foam pad there. I mean, look at that contact surface area. That is really good. And that fits in there really beautifully. You know, for a cheap filter, the bits go together really, really well. You know, you're not going to get any bypass there. The lid sits over this little fin here, so you're not going to get any bypass here. All the water is going to be forced through the foam. That is a good design. As I say, it's been copied off the 406, but they've put their own twist on it, and I like that. So we've got one, two, Four trays filled with very, very porous hard work and media. And purely for shipping reasons, I'm just putting a bit of fine pad on top of that top tray so that when we squash everything down, nothing escapes. It shouldn't escape because this lid does lock in very well over here but I want to be doubly sure. I don't want any media coming out of here, dropping down there and possibly ending up in the pump. Although I don't think it will, you know. This will just prevent anything like that happening if the box gets kicked around as it's going back to Christian. Normally you wouldn't have that on there. It wouldn't do any good anyway because the water's actually coming through the sides. It isn't coming through the top. And then to put the top on, you would go with the black clips first. One, two, and then the grey ones, and that is on there secure. And on the back of the filter, it actually gives you diagrams of exactly what to do when you need to take the pipes off, what to do when you need to take the top off, and what to do when you put the top back on. That's very good, because most people end up losing the instructions. Okay, so just a few facts and figures about this filter. It is cheap. Check it out, I'll put a link to it in the video description. Although I think the places that I looked at the other day, they were actually out of stock. So you might have to do a little bit of looking around to find out if there's any of these available. It's surprisingly well made for such a cheap filter. I am impressed by that. In fact, I am as impressed about the construction quality of this cheap filter as I was disgusted by the crap construction quality of the expensive Eheim Pro 4 filter I took a look at a long time ago. It's yeah I would have one of these. <laughs> I would I would take I would take one of these over the Eheim any day. That might sound like blasphemy you know but this is cheap and it will do a good job. It's got a 28 watt pump in here so it isn't the most efficient pump but because it's 28 watts, you're probably not going to get as much pressure drop as you would through a so-called efficient pump. The maximum flow on this is given as 1300 litres per hour, which is about 340 US gallons per hour. And normally you could more or less halve that. With this, it'll probably do a little bit better than half that because of the extra oomph that the pump's got. Have to get the calculator out here because you guys in the US will want this in gallons but this is recommended for tanks between 400 liters which is 105 US gallons to 600 liters 
which is about 158 US gallons. As far as the full cycle goes, which is zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and very, very low, possibly zero nitrate, it doesn't stand a cat in hell's chance of filtering a 600 litre normally stocked tank for a full cycle at all. We've got three kilos of media in there, so in effect, it will be suitable for a normally stocked tank of round about 300 litres, which is just short of 80 US gallons. That's for a full cycle. If it was a heavily stocked tank, like a goldfish tank, or a Malawi tank, a discus tank, or even marine, if you wanted to set this up with a marine media, you could halve that. So in effect, it would be suitable for around about 150 litres, or about 40 US gallons. I'm not sure why I'm giving these figures in US gallons, because I don't think this particular filter is available in the US, but you never know. It could be available under a different name. A lot of these cheap filters are because they're produced in China, they come over and someone in the UK might put it out. For example, there's a company over here called All Pond Solutions. They do a, a Chinese filter called All Pond Solutions, EF, whatever, EF 1000 or 1400 or 2000. In the US, you guys will know that exact range of filters as Sun Sun. There is no difference between them. Although I say people arguing about them online, the, basically the same filter from the same factory set up exactly the same and they are the same i don't know how many more times i need to explain that those aps and sun sun filters are the same but they are the same you guys will probably have one the same or exceptionally similar it'll probably just have a different maker's name on the top but i would imagine you could get them in the us and probably in other countries as well you know so for the cost of this it's a cracking little filter, but really I'm just looking at it from a, an aesthetic and a functional sort of a point of view. I'm not running these filters because these filters in these videos generally aren't mine. So basically I'm just asking you guys who are watching this, who have one of these or have used one of these in the past, just to put your experiences in the comment section. That's what that section's there for. It's just to share information and to share experiences. I don't have any experiences of running this particular filter, but I'd like you to tell other people if it runs well, how long did it last? Are you still running it? How have you set it up? Is it noisy? Um, just all the important things that people might want to know about the actual day-to-day -day running of this filter. That would be much appreciated. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it wherever you want, because on forums and Facebook groups, there's always people looking for information about filters here at least they can see how it can be set up to be very efficient or at the very least how the water flows through it. You know, it's not a full review, but it's my thoughts on this particular filter. So it might be useful to some people. If you've got a filter you want me to take a look at, just get in touch. My contact details are on the video description. Thanks for watching. See you next time.